Hey everyone, welcome to another great episode of Princess Auto's See at Work, the show where we test products live in action. Amy and Derek here as always, but today we got a special guest joining us, Mike from Tech Tips with Mike T. How's it going, Mike? Hey guys, doing well. Wish I was uh, joining you in the studio today, but it looks like you guys are gonna have a lot of fun here. We're all gonna have fun today, Mike. Even with you being where you are, we're gonna check out some really cool stuff. Uh, our episode this week is Mike and Derek taking a look at their favorite Father's Day items. That's right. So that's gonna be some cool stuff and we'll mm -hmm. test that out. As always, guys, make sure you put your questions into our comments because you could be entered to win not one, not two, but three prizes at the end of this episode. So make sure you watch right to the end and keep throwing your questions in there. And I'm gonna tell you what those prizes are a little later because I like to build suspense. That's right. Not that we're not already super exciting. That's right. All yep. right, what Don't are we have. hitting first, Derek? Um, well, I think the first thing we're gonna look at is one of my picks and it is one of our Power Fist powder coating guns. So this guy here, um, very straightforward gun, no other attachments other than a nice little air filter on it. And there's a ground strap that's not shown there just to ground the part. Um, any compressor will run this. The higher the CFM, the better. If you're using something a little bit tiny, just doing a few small parts, that's not bad. But if you've got a lot of powder coating to do, maybe look at something that's a little bit more robust. Um, it uses air pressure and static electricity that the gun will produce itself. The gun will send out powder as the powder exits the end of the gun. Um, it'll produce a positive charge and then there's a negative ground strap that's gonna hook up to the, the part and um, the attraction there is gonna hold the powder on until it's cured and you're gonna bake that in an oven. And from my experience, you're gonna to wanna to have a standalone oven to bake this in. Don't use the oven in the house because you're <laughs> not gonna to wanna to use it for anything else after. Long story about something years ago, but we won't talk about it. Um, we sell a nice little uh, tabletop oven um, that gets up to about 440 degrees and uh, perfect for small parts like this. We've got a, um, a bracket here. It's a trailer U-bolt uh, bracket. Very nice. Yep. Not painted yet. Not, not coated yeah. at all. Um, I wiped it down. I didn't blast it or anything. It's raw steel. Uh, I wiped it down with a little bit of lacquer thinner and we're going to give it a uh, give it a quick coat here. We're not going to cure it, but I do have a part that's been cured previously. Yesterday I did that and uh, we'll show you what it looks like after. What's, right. what's the setup like on this? Like, did it just pop out of the box like that? Pretty much you? out of the yeah. box. Like I say, it's, it's uh, you know, the, um, the uh, hopper is, is not attached. Um, it's an eight ounce hopper. We do sell uh, eight ounce uh, jars of red, blue, and black powder. But blue is the best. Blue is good. And uh, it's got an air filter here to trap any water. That's going to be really yeah. important with any power tool or any air tool, I should say. You want to get the air out of the system. Uh, but this is kind of a last bastion to protect the uh, dry powder that's coming out of the gun. Uh, if you find that you know you've got uh, you know a few days or hours of use on the uh, on the filter and you see some some kind of uh, little wisps of puff coming out rather than a nice even stream of powder, maybe change that filter out. You might be getting some moisture in there. Very good. Yeah. Other than filters, anything for cleaning it or cleaning it, it maintenance. It, it, it I mean, cleans off really easy. Once you're done with the uh, powder coating process, you're going to unscrew the cap. So basically, okay. turn it upside down. Uh, there's going to be some powder residue in the gun, so you're going to have your hand press it tight over the top here with the air still hooked up. You're just going to force the residue out, and then you can easily just blow the rest off with a blow gun and yeah. wait for the next use. Safety gear? Safety gear, um, eyewear, uh, goggles, uh, respirator in a really tight environment, or uh, you know, you're going to be doing a lot of it for sure. Um, we don't have any respirators today. We've got a, an extraction set up in the yeah. uh, studio here, uh, but we're going to put on eyewear just in case. We're not going to look directly at it, of course. No. It doesn't come out at a very high force. Uh, you're looking at maybe uh, 30 to 40 pounds, um, and uh, let's give her a go. And no wind. No wind, there's zero wind in here, so Don't this spray is perfect. Blue. Yep. While you're getting your eyewear on, yeah. and I've already got my goggles on for the day, uh, of course we have the first question. James would like to know if we have any dad jokes to share. You got anything? Dad for our jokes? family friendly oh, audience I usually have later. quite a few off the top of my head. I don't. Mike, do you got anything? Oh, I got one. Uh, no, let's see what Amy's got here. Come on, dads. Okay, so. I'm not very good at jokes. So, my boss is a dad, and uh, he likes to tell dad jokes on our conference calls. Um, so, what is brown and sticky all over? Don't know. Stick. <laughs> See, dads laugh. Dads it's think they're funny. It's accurate. The it's rest not, of us laugh because it's on camera. It's not wrong. <laughs> Sorry, boss. <laughs> we, get, we get paid to laugh at that All right, one. That's James, true. that one was for you from my boss. <laughs> okay, let's demo something. Sure, all right. Okay, so I've got a pressure regulator in line here to about 30 pounds off the main system. I've got my ground strap hooked up and I've got the ground attached to the hanger, just a piece of uh, TIG rod here. So I'm going to get my eyewear on. 
Which way are you pointing that thing? I'm at? pointing it at the part. So All the right. part is going to have its negative charge produced. Whoops. I'll get my clip back on here. And we'll give her a nice even coat here. What temperature is the bake done at? Perry bake, is wondering about bake that. Bake is from done uh, around 350 degrees. And what I did last night with the other component is I actually preheated the component. Kay. That helps uh, blend everything in nice and smooth. Cool. And you just pull the trigger back. It's going to let out a little plume. Nice. And you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to hold on to the trigger all the time because that attraction is going to cause the coverage, right? So you don't have to necessarily get underneath it. You just have to get a decent coating all the way through it. And of course, any dry powder that you've got, just blow it off with a compressed air gun after. Gotcha. So that's pretty decent uh, coverage on there. I don't Beautiful. see any kind of shiny components through it. No, it's perfect. Yeah, and that just gets hung in an oven and baked. I have a uh, bunch of powder coating to this summer, so I've got a large uh, you know, household oven type thing set yeah. up in the garage, and uh, we're gonna get going on that, so. Okay, I got a couple other questions here, maybe. Uh... Mike wants to jump in. Ryan is wondering how safe is the unused powder? Well, well, as long as you don't ingest it, um, there's really nothing that can go wrong with it. Okay. Tell you the truth. Mike, what about, uh, will that powder coat, um, will that powder coat washers for washer toss? That's a good question, Tracy. Yeah, you can coat everything. Uh, there's even some guys that uh, do a lot of target shooting and they will coat their bullets. Okay. Yep. All right, Derek's got four points. Mike, I'm gonna line you no up for kidding. one more. Tara is wondering, do you sell bigger hoppers or would they fit this? Um, well, as far as hoppers, um, it's the ovens. Currently, we just have one that's like a toaster oven. In fact, we, uh, we uh, showcased that one on um, our Christmas crossover. So uh, right now, we've only got the, uh, the smaller unit. Um, but, um, you know, those aren't actually all that hard to uh, make. Um, you can just get some sheet metal, make a kind of a, a surround and even just an electrical element inside that, uh, um, you know, doesn't come into contact with the, uh, with the, the paint itself and you've got a thermostat on it. Um, lots, of, lots of people, you know, make their own to suit the size of the space that they're working in, also the components. So for us right now, we just carry the, uh, just the toaster oven and um, whatever you do, don't use that for uh, anything but powder coating. Um, <laughs> otherwise, uh, um, it, it could be uh, nature's gonna call pretty quick. Yeah. yeah, no pizza pops in there. <laughs> all right, guys, how often should we change the filters? Um, it, it all depends. I mean, if you've got a really good water separating system on your compressor, you can get away with a, a quite a while, uh, a lot of use on it. But again, if you're just running straight off a smaller compressor, and especially if you're working in a really humid environment, I know locally here, we've had a lot of humidity lately. No. And yeah, and look at my hair is just hard I know, to believe. right? It's ridiculous. And uh, you just can't, uh, can't really control the amount of moisture that your compressor is taking in. Draining the tank is gonna help a lot, consistently draining the tank. Um, but I would suggest if you have a real big job to do, just throw another filter on. We sell them in two packs, they're reasonably priced and uh, it takes the, uh, the onus off of you not preparing the job properly and wasting powder, wasting time. Yeah. Yep. Okay, let's take a couple more questions on this one. There's a lot of them coming in. Uh, Susie is wondering, how can you tell if the powder coat is cured? Um, realistically, if you've got the part, like I say, preheated, or if you don't, um, you're going to have your timer on. The part itself is the temperature that you want to try and um, uh, check. So if you have like an infrared thermometer, don't rely on the temperature that's showing on the stove. Uh, rely on the part. Open the door quick, hit the part with the IR thermometer and see what that's set at. Usually you're at about 15 to 20 minutes at about 350 degrees. Now every powder is going to be different. There's thousands of types of powder out there. Um, the ones that we sell, very reasonably uh, um, regulated for heat, so they don't have to be very high temperature for very long. I think I baked this for, it was preheated, I think it was maybe 20 minutes at 350, okay. and it cooled down right away. I went down after and took a look, and yeah, it's, it's really nice. I'll show you the piece here. Yeah, this the is, after. This the is after. the after, and a uh, little bit of dust on it from the, uh, the blue uh, powder. Yeah, that looks good. But uh, yeah, and uh, the nice thing about this is when this came into vogue years ago, um, especially in like street rods and uh, off-roading and things like that, the um, strike with a hammer, like a pointed hammer, would actually chip and flake off the paint, just regular paint, even yeah. hardened automotive paint. Um, it will deform this and in most cases it won't relieve anything and so it won't fall off. Uh, so it's a lot sturdier than uh, a baked on coating than a typical uh, just hardened coating. Cool. Yep. I'm going to do two more questions. I got one for Mike. Uh, how many different nozzles does it come with? Fred is wondering that. 
uh, nozzles yeah. basically as an adjustable nozzle. It's one nozzle. I believe you can thread it in and out to create a, a wider, you know, path on it. Um, that's the beauty about this unit versus having an electrical, the old school way. So yeah. this one here just creates that, um, that, that static electricity within the tube. And then you can adjust the nozzle, um, according. It's not kind of like a paint gun where it, the liquid, um, needles need to be, you know, changed out for different sizes, for different spray patterns. Um, so this one just comes with a, a standard nozzle and um, you can adjust it uh, slightly to get a, you know, a bigger cloud. Um, yeah, so, but uh, what I can really stress is the, the, the prep work on it. Um, you know, Derek's talking about, you know, um, how he put thinner on it and, 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 and he, any little fingerprint or anything like that that you've left on there, um, that paint won't or the powder won't uh, bind to the, the components. So uh, prep is, is major, major for a, a nice looking piece like he's created there uh, um, that he's got on the desk. Yeah, he did some good work. Good yeah. answers, guys. Yeah. Last question. Daryl is wondering if we can mix, I'm elaborating his question a little bit. I'm elaborating, Daryl. Can we mix red and blue to together and make some purple? Uh, Any limits to your colors? I suppose you could. I guess it would all depend on how much you're putting in. I guess you could measure weight and even amount of weight of both types. Um, like I say, there's a myriad of, of colors and, and finishes uh, available, um, you know, throughout the world. But um, what we've got here is, is pretty generic for, um, you know, just a, a standardized color. Yeah. If you're going to do some suspension components or, uh, you know, redo a quad or something like that um, from basic black to red and blue. And uh, yeah, mix it. Why not? Give it a shot. The world is your oyster, yeah. Daryl. Make purple. Test it out. Yeah. All right. What else have we got? Well, What's your second pick, Derek? My second pick is uh, maybe not as exciting, um, but I like it. I've got a couple of them at home. It's a 1,300 pound uh, sawhorse. So we've got some B-roll here, folds up nice. Uh, the legs lock into place when it's all folded up so it won't fall down when you're carrying it. And they lock down into place when you've got it static on the ground. They're adjustable. Each individual leg is adjustable separately. So if you've got different heights and a dissimilar kind of surface you're working on, and um, it's got a nice kind of a anti-skid top on it, a uh, grip tape. Um, the uh, other thing is it's got a couple pockets on either side of it. You can put a two by four or a two by six and make a really sturdy uh, kind of job site work table, throw a piece of sheet good down on it. Yeah. If you've got a few hundred dollars to spend on a piece of plywood. A few then, thousand dollars to spend on wood this summer, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, really nice, nice and light. Um, and like I say, very compact. Once you're done with them, if you're not using them, just Fold them up, put them in a corner of the garage, uh, hang them up on the wall, and ready to go next time. Derek, how light is light? Like, how many cats are we talking about? Uh, cats? Geez, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I guess it depends on the cat, but yeah. maybe like six cats. Six cats. Oh, those are some skinny cats. Skinny cats. All right, cool. Yeah. Very, very good. Uh, so before we get into some other stuff, I just want to remind everybody who's just tuning in, this is Princess Auto's See at Work, where we test products live in action. Amy and Derek on site, with Mike joining us on Zoom from Tech Tips with Mike T. These guys are gonna be answering questions in our chat for the whole episode, so make sure you throw your comments and your questions into our comments. You can be entered to win, and I'm gonna tell you two of the three prizes now. Two $250 gift cards and one other prize that will be a surprise at the end of our show. So make sure you keep your questions going. We won't backtrack too much, but if you have questions about the sprayer, um, we, will, we will make sure that we're getting to those uh, later for you guys. So we'll make sure that we're answering everything you've got. All right. Okay. What are we doing next? Mike, what have you got? Well, it's my turn, eh? So, it's Mike's turn. Um, I, I'd love, uh, you know, for my kids to get me um, a, an oscillating tool. So it's a little electric 120 volt uh, tool. Um, this thing will do all those honeydew uh, jobs that you may have around the house. So um, there are a couple of options. Uh, we do have one that is a fixed um, OPM or orbit per minute. Um, that's basically how fast it's going to move back and forth, as well as one that is variable. So uh, it's a really simple system. Um, they are basically um, a ton of, of blades and ad adapters and connectors that you can put on here. Um, these things here work for drywall. They work on grout removal. Um, you can add a sanding pad that has a hook and loop system so you're not having to worry about sticky pads. Um, you know, you can use a little grinding um, adapter to it. Um, cutting and sawing. Basically, this thing will do all of those fine jobs. Now, obviously, I can't do that in my office here at home, <laughs> but um, when, uh, when we get to it, Derek's going to actually show you uh, um, a, a live demo, and that's why I'm jealous I'm not in my shop. Um, but I've used them, um, you know, in the past doing uh, odd jobs. Um, I'd love for my kids to get me one here. 
Um, you know, they're really good for molding work. So if you're doing new flooring and you don't want to have to trim out that around the, the base of the molding, um, they are so fine that you can go in, just trim off the base of that molding and basically slide that new flooring in if it's laminate or whatever that might look like. And um, you won't have to worry about trying to contour that laminate versus just taking off a little bit of the edge of the, uh, the molding. So these things have a ton of uses um, and uh, they're not, you know, they're relatively inexpensive. And, um, you know, this is something that uh, I, I think most dads that have a lot of projects around the house uh, will enjoy. Really cool, definitely. Yeah. I think yeah. we noticed too, it doesn't need an Allen key. Did we talk about this a little nope. bit? Yeah, it's as you saw in the B-roll, it's toolless. Yeah. So to change the tool, you just flip up the paddle here, lock it forward, and then slide the tool out. So you can change, like Mike said, we've yeah. got just a regular little flat cut blade here. In the kit with this tool, you'll get the uh, detail sanding pad, and you've got uh, between number 60 and 240 grit paper that'll come with it. You've also got a nice little scraper blade, so if you've got some silicone to clean off, some caulking around some old windows, some old glazing putty, um, we've got a little tiny uh, flush cut bit here. Now this is for wood, um, like Mike was saying, going into trim and um, cutting out uh, for laminate floor or adjusting something if you're putting in a new insulation with some trim, really, really handy. And a nice big blade here. Now this you can use for drywall, uh, non-ferrous metal, so if you're doing, you know, cutting copper, aluminum, things like that. And it's, the nice thing is, is this is a blade that's got a lot of surface area for cutting, but let's say you're only uh, gonna be doing a little bit of a trim, but you've got the small blade, you can put the blade in at a straight 90, right out front. You can go in at nice. a 45, you can go in at a 180 degrees basically all the way around. So if you've got an odd shape and you wanna cut it at an angle, you can do that. You can just set it, lock it in. There's a locating pins on the head of the unit and cut away. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, we've got some questions, of course. Uh, Jeffrey and Katie are wondering, um, and I quote, how many is a ton of blades, Mike? How many blades a we get? A ton of blades. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, uh, if, if you receive our catalog, uh, you can go in there and see, we've got about three pages. I would say we carry well over 30 different types of blades, um, different sizes for different materials. Um, plus, these are pretty standard in the industry. The, um, the, the, the connection point, the quick connection point is pretty standard. So um, there are other companies out there that sell um, you know, um, the blades. We hope that you come to Princess for uh, <laughs> these types of blades, of course. But um, if you have some or you know, you're somewhere else and you're looking for it, um, these will fit um, many of the other um, brands out there. They're definitely uh, pretty standard when it comes to the Quick Connects, but we carry well over 30 or 40 different types uh, for different materials. So come to us and we, we can help you out with any of those projects. Absolutely. Uh, if Mike's kids and family are watching, come see Amy and Derek at the Panet Road store. We're going <laughs> to help you out. Going to get you a good Father's Day present. That's right. Yep. And probably you, and I'd like to take one home too. Sure. We're, all, we're all getting one. Um, how long do the blades last? I know it kind of depends on what kind of work we're doing, but what mm -hmm. do you guys have for that? That's coming from Nicole, wondering that. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, if you're cutting a lot of soft stuff, drywall, yeah. um, like say soft aluminum, copper, things like that, um, with any blade, you want to let the blade do the work. If you're really going to force a blade, um, especially if you're going to some really dense wood, you're working in an older home, maybe there's, you know, fir timber, something like that, uh, well-aged, it could be a little uh, harder to cut, um, maybe some oak, uh, the blade's going to wear a little bit. Now, if you've got an instance where you can just you know, cut away and let the saw do the work, that's gonna save your blade and it's gonna give you the longevity you're looking for. But realistically, it's hard to say exactly, you know, a day, a week, a month. Uh, it's all how you use the blade and what you're using the blade on. Yeah. But um, from experience, uh, I've got the original blades that came with mine. I've had mine for probably eight years now. And uh, I've bought other blades uh, for different applications uh, just to kind of Auto. fill in at Princess Auto, of course. Of course. And um, yeah, they're all still perfectly usable. Great. Yep. How many oscillations per minute from Steven? Ooh, those are some, like, good okay, questions, I got, guys. Uh, I can get Make that one. Sweat. So okay. yeah. we've got two models that we carry. One, and like I said, is a fixed model, and one is a variable. So our fixed model, um, it runs around um, 21,000 OPMs, as they call it, orbits per minute. Um, and then our 
variable can range from 15 to 22,000. So it's spinning. You almost can't even see it moving. It looks like it's just vibrating, um, you know, back and forth. So um, it's on par with many of the other products that are out there on the market. And uh, the nice thing about having a variable, it gives you that depending on the material you're working with, you may have a little bit more fine tuning to adjust down and maybe you don't want to be as uh, um, aggressive with that uh, that product. So definitely uh, in that 20,000, 21,000 for, um, you know, just your standard non-adjustable one or variable, the variable is 15 to 22,000. Cool. Yeah. All right. That was a lot of talking, a lot of good questions. Yeah. Keep the questions coming in, but it's time for Keep some action. Done. Yeah. I want to okay. play with it. Let's yeah. go. Amy's, uh, we've got a, a electrical box uh, shape kind of cut into a piece or uh, drawn in a piece of drywall. So sure. she's going to mimic cutting in if you're putting up a sheet of drywall and you're going to cut in for a box. So we're going to put on some safety gear here. I have had tons of practice with tons this. Tons of practice. So it's we're okay. good to go. But yeah. like Mike was saying, it makes noise. I like it. We've got the uh, variable model here. So what we'll do is we'll turn it down to, ah, let's see. Beginner. Yeah, we're going to, I think six is the highest speed. We'll knock it down to three and we'll see okay. how you do with that. So I'll hold on to that. Okay. I'll move everything over here so we don't get Yeah, that's dust our producer's phone. So yeah, let's that's just move okay. that over a little bit where it's safe. She's got a budget. That's right. We got a budget yeah. for that. Okay, so you're going to hold it and I'm, I'm going to hold cut it. it. Yeah, and you're going to cut it. Okay. Just come in square as you can. I want to hold it this way. Okay. And okay. I'm going to go right through. So I'm doing a like terrible that. job so far. This way? Yep, you want to come in straight on it. Like this? Yep. Okay. And there I do want to go this yep. way. Yep. Oh, and your, then I want to angle it. Get your corner it. cut. Yep. Cut your corner square on the corner. When Derek did it, it was fast and beautiful. This is we can embarrassing. Speed it up if you want to speed <laughs> no, it up no. a little bit. This is good. Kids yeah. can do it too. Yeah, get your All corner right. cut. I'm going to get my corner yeah. in. Start here. with your corner. Cut down. Cut the blade in, right? Like this. There you go. Yeah. Can I do it? Sure. <laughs> Gotta get the paper just in the top corner here. <laughs> so if anybody needs me to come cut electrical boxes. Good. Okay. Down on the side. Oh, right here. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Good. Think we're good? That's it. Yeah. Give it a poke. I don't know. Last time it wasn't. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Okay, practice makes perfect, practice guys. Makes That's perfect. why power tools are so fun. That's true. You just plug them in and they never stop. Yep. All right, so I did a perfect job. Absolutely. <laughs> You're my boss. You did a perfect job, Sorry, thank as you. always. I appreciate that, Derek. Sure. All right, cool. So I did have a question, and I think it came from Steve, and I could be wrong, and I'll double check that. Um, totally wrong. It's from Tara, and she's wondering what other kind of metals it cuts. Obviously, we've shown what it does with drywall. Yep. Yeah. Well, it would be something thinner and something lighter. I wouldn't be cutting any mild steel to do any welding projects with it. It just doesn't have the capacity to do that. But um, if you're doing some plumbing, copper plumbing, um, it can cut plastic. If you're cutting, you want to trim out some, uh, yeah. some PEX plumbing, um, aluminum, uh, brass, anything on the softer side. Um, just uh, like I say, you don't want to be cutting angle yeah. iron with it. Not going to work. What about concrete? Susie is wondering if it will cut concrete. Um, so concrete might be, um, you know, with the right, obviously the right bit, uh, but it will cut porcelain, it'll Don't cut ceramic, it. and um, there is even a glass attachment for it. So definitely, um, you know, those types of material, those porous materials, um, there's many different um, styles and, and makeup of concrete. So that would all depend on, you know, that type of concrete. But if it's just, you know, um, maybe brickwork, something like that, that um, the mortar that's in there, Definitely, all that works. It's great for the grout as well. So, um, yeah, it's 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 the the blades are widely um, accessible to all different, basically all different types of material. Again, mild steel, very thin, thin, but definitely it's not something that you want to substitute a grinder for. for example. Okay. 
So you wouldn't want to grind out grout with it. You'd want to use the grinder for what you need, right? Um, grinding out grout with this, um, there's actually an attachment that um, is for grout removal. So um, that's actually not a bad thing, um, you know, but as far as like metal fabrication and that kind of stuff, that's probably for a different tool. That was for Susie. So it can grind grout. Say that yes. three times fast. Okay. Uh, yep. To Tara and Brian, who would like me to come help them for the weekend. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I work for beer and I'll probably bring Derek because supervision is best. Um, safety first, we'll bring the, glo the gloves and uh, if you want, I can wash your cars too. Um, I have one more question in here from Melanie. Do we get a lot of vibration out of using it? I'm going to say not really. I think it's I think it's probably the better you are at it, the more steady you're going to be holding it. So it's not too yeah. didn't tickle my hands too much. Yeah, it know. doesn't like it doesn't have a, a wide you know uh, width on the cut. It's, it's hard to explain. The oscillations, like Mike was saying, they're very small and yeah. uh, they're very tight. So it doesn't it's not going to cut out you know four inches at a time. You've got to kind of move along the cut. Uh, if you're doing a lot of cutting with it over time, you might get a little bit of vibration feel in the hand, but um, it's very well contained and very well balanced. So you don't get a lot of, uh, a lot of vibration and just you know, doing a few boxes here and there would be quite good. What about maintenance it's tips also, on this? Sorry, oh, I got okay. something else to add to of that. Um, you know, it's, it's maybe not necessarily the tool that's going to be um, giving you the vibration. It could be the material that you're working with. So depending on, you know, the, the density of that material, that can give you the vibration through. But the tool itself doesn't vibrate uh, all that much. It's just basically like a hum in your hand. Yeah, yep. yeah kind of like a sander. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, there was another question. Oh yes, that's right. Mike, what are the maintenance tips like for this? Maintenance, basically like any tool, keeping it clean. Um, you know, make sure that, you know, if you're doing a lot of drywall, um, that fine dust can get into the moving parts, just blow it out. Um, you know, lubricate it every now and again with a little squirt of, uh, you know, lubrication oil or, or um, you know, penetrant oil, uh, making sure your cords are in good shape and um, storing it, you know, obviously in a, you know, a safe spot. We don't want kids getting involved with it uh, that, uh, you know, we don't want them getting her injured, but definitely on the maintenance side, it's so low maintenance, just making sure that the, the clips and everything are working uh, all the time. And um, yeah, that's really about it. There's not a lot to it. Perfect. Uh, Melanie is just wondering, does the glass attachment come with it or do we buy it separately? Um, for the most part, those are, um, specialty blades. So those will have to be purchased, you know, um, other than what comes with it. There's just a couple of, you know, to get you going. And then as you get kind of more specific to, you know, the, the materials, you'll have to go and buy the blades, but again, we carry them. So they're on the shelf. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Alan on YouTube is wondering, is there a circular blade available? Um, so a circular blade, um, for cutting, um, there's there's kind of a more of an oval blade um it's not like a circular saw where it's going to spin don't forget this just vibrates back and forth very quickly um so you're not going to get a kind of that cutting action but you you do get different kind of angles of blades um there is a bit of an oval blade like you see there's a bit of a triangle kind of you know sanding pad so they do come in different shapes it's just you're not going to get a circular blade for, um, you know, creating any kind of rotational cut. Um, like Derek showed, you can change the, the angle that you mount that in. So depending on where you're trying to cut in, well, then that's, um, you know, you know, see that there, Derek's holding up the, uh, um, you know, almost not quite a circle, but almost that, you know, a, a half moon as we call it. Like a macaroni shape, but we call yeah. it a half moon. <laughs> I'm not the tech tips expert, so <laughs> uh, sure, half moon it is. All right, so we spent some time talking about your guys' picks. Um, keep the questions coming in. I keep seeing them coming through, so we will get to them. But I've got more cool stuff to share with you guys. So if you are just tuning in, this is Princess Auto's See at Work, the show where we test products live in action. Amy and Derek on site. Mike joining us today, special guest from Tech Tips with Mike T. On the camera, there we go. And today we're checking out favorite Father's Day items. So I've got a few of my own that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, so my first one is this electric cooler. This thing is super, super cool. 
Um, so let me tell you a little bit about it. So it's good for any outdoor event or camping. It does need to be plugged in, so it's gotta be somewhere where you've got some power. It can freeze up to minus 20. It's got super easy maintenance for cleaning. I haven't counted how many beers and ice can fit in here yet, but we will take a, take a look at that if there's any specific questions there. It also has an LED push button panel, and on there it has a place to plug in your USB or your phone, play your music. Um, I would like to point out as somebody who doesn't have a cottage, this is perfect to be used anywhere where you're more than 10 feet away from your fridge and you need a beer and you're outside. So I would get into that one there. Yeah, and then um, I did have, while we're in the subject of kind of food and storage, Mike, I skipped you and I can't believe I did it. It was the most delicious of your, uh, of your gifts to share. So we're gonna loop back to you. I can't believe I skipped it. Live TV. So Mike, what's the other delicious item that you have to share? Your second pick. I'm so sorry. Well, the, the item isn't delicious, but what it can make is delicious. So, um, you know, for me, uh, a turkey shooter, so a turkey cannon, whatever you want to call it, um, or a jerky um, shooter. Basically, um, the jerky um, can be turkey, it can be deer, it can be elk, it can be beef, it can be pork, whatever it is, your flavor. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, we don't like gamey meat, we like, uh, you know, tenderized meat. But we want it in different forms. So this turkey, uh, uh, the jerky shooter, basically can give you um, round uh, um, pepperettes, or you can get, um, you know, flat jerky. Um, you can make all kinds of different uh, flavoring. Uh, personally, I like the cracked pepper garlic, but they've come with garlic. They come with um, teriyaki, hickory, um, hot buffalo, and then there's some traditional blends. So there's lots of different um, um, ways to make the jerky, uh, but this unit here can handle about a, a one and a half pound uh, capacity um, uh, of meat. Um, it's about 15 inches long. Um, it does use stainless nozzles, so it's a lot easier to clean and uh, keep uh, sanitary. Um, it comes apart to clean completely. Um, of course, working with um, you know meats and that kind of stuff, we want to make sure that uh, that's safe to use. Um, you can even um, use the one adapter to make smaller sausage links. So it may not be the jerky curing that you want to do. It could be something else that you want to do. So um, this is a great uh, a tool to get for you know Father's Day or any time, um, especially if you're an outdoorsman uh, like myself and uh, enjoy, uh, you know, doing a little bit of smoking, barbecuing, and uh, um, enjoying, uh, you know, the meats that are out there. So I guess if you wanted to, you know, uh, possibly try some sort of uh, vegan uh, jerky, there's always that option too. Um, I'm not sure how that would turn out. I'm sure it's not nearly as good as, uh, you know, I... some uh, nice oh, fresh elk. It's called pepper, what is that called? Jackfruit, jackfruit's great stuff. Jackfruit, yeah. there you Absolutely. go. Absolutely, okay, so from what Derek and I understand, point, shoot, seasoning, and you got some jerky? Pretty yeah, straightforward. You're gonna, uh, yeah, you're, you're basically the prep work is the hardest. You know, you're going to have to season your your meats and and uh, with those different seasonings and curing, and then um, just you're going to need a few other things, right? The gun itself is pretty basic. It's just going to load it up, pull the trigger, and it's going to come out just like a you know a caulking gun would um, with uh, silicone coming out. Uh, except this is edible, um, hopefully. And uh, you do need some drying racks and that kind of stuff that do not come with the unit, but um, definitely, uh, you know, um, there's, there's lots of videos and there's lots of information. Um, if you get in the aisle and you're ordering online or you're in our store and you're, we've got all kinds of um, meat processing equipment that can help support that, uh, that jerky gun. Cool, that's a good one. I'm glad we did get to it, it is delicious. Um, getting mm -hmm. back into the outdoorsman sort of theme, um, my next pick that I wanna get to is I grabbed some fishing rods. So for me, I think that fishing is gonna be a good thing for us to be trying to do this summer. Um, it's great for social distancing and my favorite, sitting in the sun and drinking beer. So I think fishing rods are something you can do with your friends, your family, your grandkids. You can dig a hole in the ice and do it in the winter if that's your choice. Really early in the morning, go for it. Uh, but these are the ones that I pulled out for us. So I didn't wanna to spend too, too much time. It's pretty straightforward, right, Derek? That's but right. fishing is yeah. something that people love to do and this is gonna be a good summer for it. So yeah. I definitely recommend those. Well, the nice thing about like what we've got here is like we see here on the B-roll, we've got, uh, that's a, a small little fixed guy, so it's not adjustable, little tiny length there. So 
little guys fishing off a dock or out of a boat, canoe, whatever you've got, or if you want to take it ice fishing. But we do have some more models that uh, telescope. They yes. fold out, and so anywhere from kids to adults can use them. Some of them come with some little tackle like we see here, and uh, you can throw a pickerel jig on there or whatnot, and uh, go have some fun with the family. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Uh, before we get to some more of my picks, I'm gonna circle around. We're just bouncing around a little bit. Um, so in terms of the jerky, would freezing the gun affect the operation? Um, it's always nice to, uh, when you're handling meat and, and, and basically, you know, we won't get into the whole processing, but, uh, um, freezing the gun itself probably, um, isn't going to be a benefit. Um, but having almost not quite co a frozen meat, like something that's got pretty stiff, um, will hold your jerky as you're pumping it through your strips or your tubes will hold together much better, uh, you know, much more consistent um, versus something that's been warmed up and then it get kind of, you know, and then it gets sticky and then it may not start, uh, you know, continue to pump properly. You might get little air gaps in there. So um, cold meat or cold mixture of meat and, and, and spices and, and seasoning and cures um, is a lot easier to create you know, jerky, um, just because it's going to come out more consistent. Plus you're going to heat it up as you're pumping it through, depending on how thin or how thick that meat is. So, um, you know, but freezing it, I, I don't think you're going to get any benefit. Um, obviously keeping it clean and cool. Um, you know, you don't want to be doing this in, you know, plus 30 degree weather outside. Um, but definitely, um, just keeping it clean, um, you can put a little bit of uh, vegetable oil or, or food um, grade oils to help lubricate the components, but freezing it's probably not going to help. How many ounces does it hold? Um, it, I'm not sure the ounces. I know it said that it holds a one and a half pounds. So I guess what, uh, we'll, you know, carry the one and yeah, we'll go that. back we'll to uh, that standard or, or metric or whatever we're doing, sure. but uh, about a pound and a half of, um, <laughs> of meat um, is its capacity per tube. So whatever that is in ounces. Awesome. You okay. put me on the spot there. I did, yeah, let's convert, let's do that. <laughs> All right, so um, I have another pick for us. It's gonna be the five drawer tool cart with multiple, with multiple storage. Obviously it has five drawers. Uh, the top lid opens, there's room at the bottom for other bulky heavy items. It's all on wheels, the wheels lock beautiful it's black it matches with everything it locks so you can put snacks in there and nobody can get at them I would recommend uh, depending on how many of these you've acquired and collected over your time already that you leave one drawer empty for you to do that sweep when you're trying to finish up a project and you haven't managed your time properly you keep that drawer for your junk drawer so that you can sweep everything into it and everything else is nice and organized because uh, I like a nice organized station where my cords are all set up and everything is safe that's what I would recommend. What do you what do you think about that, Derek? I really like it. I like the fact that uh, the drawers do lock on it. So when you're uh, going to open them, there's a little tab underneath the lip of the drawer pull, and that way, if you're going around a corner or something like that, it's not going to slide open. Nothing's going to slide out or fall out. Yes. And it's very sturdy. Um, when this is all bolted together out of the box, uh, it's it's a really nice unit. Any shop uh, be very happy to have that. I think. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay. Are you guys ready for my last pick? Yes. It's exciting. I'm excited. It's going to be good. Mike, are you ready? I'm ready. Building some anticipation. I've oh, saved the yeah. best for last. Guys, my last pick is the electric bike. Yeah. 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 Check wow. this thing out. First of all, it folds up. It's pretty light. You can see it's in the small car there, so it's popping out of there in a tiny little space, and then it'll unfold. This thing goes 32 kilometers an hour. Um, I believe that's pretty speedy. I've tried it, it's fun, it's fun to play with. So now we're locking in, what is that, the frame there? Yeah, that's the frame component. The handlebars. Yeah, we're gonna lock the handlebars in place and now it's ready to go. Now we can go up to a speed yeah. of five yeah, on this one. Yeah, there's five different uh, speeds you can set at and uh, you can do full electric, you can do an electric assist or you can just pedal. That's right, but why would you pedal when it's electric? Why would you pedal? This thing is perfect for emission-free transportation. Look at this guy working so hard yeah. in this video, pedaling away. That cast. is my only recommendation, is you just sit back and relax and push that button. Uh, but that's a really, really cool item. I think that's going to be really popular this summer, and I think we gotta, we got to play with these, and yeah. you guys got to come check these out. Yeah. yeah, and here we're going to uh, unlock the, uh, the shock, so now you have your suspension mode there. So if you're going off-road, you can go over some stumps and some hills, and uh, you know, just kind of act as you would. The, um, the nice thing is, is 
off-road, on-road, it's really stable. The tires are a 20 by four, so they're nice and broad. They're not too big, so there's lots of dexterity there. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I've had a chance to play with these guys and they're great. Mike, have you ever had a chance to ride one of these? Um, basically just testing a few, but not, not really uh, enjoying a, you know, a trip down memory lane there like, uh, like the video is showing there, that's for sure. I'd love to, love to get on one. Make uh, Amy get on and give it a shot? <laughs> that is a must, um, you know, for sure. Uh, one of us has got to get on there. Unfortunately, I'm not in the shop, so, uh, um, you know, enjoy uh, trying that out. I, I think uh, definitely Amy is my pick. Amy's the one to do it, guys. I'm already ready to roll. Like, I don't know. <laughs> can, we, can we do this? Can we roll it? I think so. Here we go. So I've got my speed cranked up to five because uh, redheads like to go fast. And I'm not gonna pedal as much as the video. Look at Woo! that. We're completely insured. There's no reason to worry at all. Does that thing do sweet jumps or what? It does do sweet jumps. There's no pegs on it though. <laughs> Look out for the pallets. There we go. Again. Okay. We'll just watch her come back and make sure we're all standing at a safe distance. Nice and quiet. You can sneak up on people. Look at that. This is super Isn't cool. it fun? There got to be a I lot could, of questions in our comments for this one. I would imagine. For sure. Yeah. I could use one of those to get into the tree stand. That's for sure. Okay. So each of us are hopefully getting all of the prizes that we are offering yeah, on the show and all of work. the stuff that we've tested out. What is the weight limit on the bike? I believe it is 260 pounds thereabout. Give or take some COVID Give or take that some snacking. Have done this That's year. right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, how long does the charge last? So I think I can answer this. I think it's anywhere from 40 to 100 kilometers, depending on how adventurous, fun, and heavy you are. That's right. How'd I do? Yeah. It's pretty, there's, pretty There's accurate. a big window. Yep. Yeah. Does the bike have a speedometer on it so you know how fast you're going? It does. Yeah, it does. It's right here. Yep. I was going five, but I didn't check my, I don't look at my speedometer very much. No. Just push that button and go. Never. All right. And Suzanne is wondering if the seat is adjustable. I'm short, so I find a lot of bike seats don't go low. Suzanne, I don't know if, like, I mean, the camera probably adds makes oh, me look six feet tall but i'm five nothing we had to drop the seat all the way down and i can get right on it so it does fit it is comfy yep. short girls can ride too it's I'm all good. over six feet tall and i've ridden them yep yeah yeah super super fun um so keep the questions coming in guys we're going to take a few more and then i think it's time to draw for winners so just so you guys remember we are giving away two 250 dollars gift cards today and one free electric cooler for you to fill your beer in this summer uh, so throw your last few questions in the chat and we're going to draw a winner right away. Yeah. I'm going to just take a look at a few more. Sure. What do we got? Um, Steven, this would be fantastic for my dad. How long does the battery last? So I think we kind of covered yeah, that a little bit. Again, it's, it's all dependent on how much assist you're using, uh, what kind of conditions you're riding in. Uh, if you're doing a lot of pedaling and you're using a very light assist, it's going to last a lot longer than just doing full top speed electric. Um, I'm going to suggest probably 40 to 50 kilometers on a full charge. Yeah. A little bit more if you're using it a little bit more thrifty. And if you're not using it all, it's going to last forever. Maintenance on this? Uh, maintenance like any other bike, right? You're going to want to check the tires, make sure you don't have any cracking or yeah. anything. Uh, check your cables, make sure they're not going to rub on anything. Lubrication, cleaning of the chain if you're yeah. doing some off-roading, you got some dirt or some, some debris in there. Um, it's basic bike maintenance, really. Nothing too advanced. But guys, remember, if it's muddy, it's cool, right? That's right. All right. Um, does PL, does PA sell replacement batteries? That's from Chad. We do. Yeah, we have tires, batteries, do. cables, shifters, all the hard parts. Awesome. Yeah. I think it's time to draw a winner, guys. Sure, I'm let's so do excited. It. And I just I want to get on this bike yeah. and go again. <laughs> all right. So our winners today, gift card number one, 250 bucks. That goes to Jeff Nichols from Facebook. Our second winner today, that's a gift card number two. For 250 bucks, that goes to Alan from YouTube. And our third winner of the electric cooler that I don't know how many beers fit into it yet, but I'm <laughs> going to expect you'll tell me that is Anna Carr from Facebook. Congratulations. So, yeah, congrats to all three winners. I want to say thanks to Mike for joining us today. This was really fun. It was cool to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. And you know what? Uh, it's uh, it's about time you guys cross over to the Tech Tips with Mike T at some point coming in the fall. Thing. Yeah, it's going to happen. Um, We're gonna come I'd just like to up. say... Thanks for uh, having me and happy uh, Father's Day to all uh, all those out there. And uh, this is, uh, has been a blast. So I was hoping that I was going to get the right answer for that bike. Jeez. I don't know. Mike, you can come ride the bike. <laughs> It'll be okay. Thank you very much to Mike. 
Thank you to you guys for tuning in. Congrats to our winners. Happy Father's Day to everybody. See you guys next time on our next episode of See at Work. Can you hold this so sure. I can go bike out go here? Go for a boot. All right. Peace out, guys. You got to come back after, right? Nope. You're the boss today, Derek. Okay.